Hi friends, I'm Amy from Amy Latta Creations, and I'm so excited that you're joining me for today's class. We're gonna be creating hand-lettered farmhouse style wooden signs. This month at Michael's, we're talking about how to make all kinds of art and home decor for our home on wooden sign bases. Here's an example of today's project that I created. Mine says, this is us, but yours can say anything at all that you like. In order to make this sign, we're gonna be learning some basics of hand lettering and then using Tombow ABT Pro markers to translate that into a beautiful piece of decor that you can hang anywhere in your house. There's a few materials that you're gonna to need to have on hand. First, you'll need a wooden sign base. The one that I recommended came from my local Michaels craft section uh, where the wood is. It is 18 inches long by about four inches tall and it's already pre-whitewashed, which I love because that means the surface is prepared and ready for me to write directly on it. I don't need to do anything extra. If, however, your sign base is a different size or shape, or maybe it's unfinished, that's totally fine. If it's not pre-whitewashed or painted, you'll want to give it a few base coats of white or another light neutral color first and let those dry completely while we work on our hand lettering. Another supply that you'll need to have on hand is a pencil with a good eraser, and you're going to need the handouts that were linked in your supply list. These are going to walk us through our brush drills. You'll want some scrap paper. Computer paper is just fine. And last but certainly not least, you'll need Tombow ABT Pro markers. You're definitely gonna want a black one, and if you wanna fill in your leafy vine embellishments, you might wanna have a green on hand too. I really like the black and white farmhouse look, but adding color is never a bad thing either. Once you have all your supplies gathered, let's talk for a second about the ABT Pro Marker and why that's really important. This marker can't be substituted for anything else that you have in your craft stash. That's because it is a brush tip marker that happens to be permanent. It has a brush tip on one end and a chisel tip on the other, and it's alcohol-based ink, which means we can use this pen to do our brush lettering on a variety of surfaces, including metal, plastic, glass, and today's project, wood. Other brush pens, like the Tombow Dual Brush Pens that I often use in my lettering are water-based, which is great for some projects and awesome for watercoloring, but not great when we wanna write on a wooden sign. So that's why we wanna use the right tool for the job. Tombow ABT Pro, a black one, maybe a green one, or any other colors that you like that go with your home decor, because those are what we're gonna to use to write permanently on our wooden sign. Take a minute and grab those supplies if you haven't already, and then we're gonna get ready to talk about hand lettering. Hand lettering is an art form that basically just means taking our written words and turning them into art. There's no right or wrong way to do it, and there are so many different fonts, embellishments, and doodles that it encompasses. There's so much to learn, but today we're gonna to focus on one style of hand lettering, and that's called brush script. If you look at something that's written in brush script, what you'll notice that makes it stand apart or be different from other kinds of fonts is that within every single letter, there's a contrast between lines that are thick and dark and lines that are much thinner. Every single letter has this contrast, and what it does is gives us a cohesive look that's really pleasing to our eyes. This brush script style can be achieved in two different ways. One is called faux calligraphy, and it can be done with any kind of writing utensil you have, even a pencil. This is something that I cover in my Lettering Academy 101 class, as well as in my book, Hand Lettering for Relaxation, and on my website. There's a second way though, and that's what we're gonna focus on today, which is a real brush technique. This is an artistic technique that has us use a special tool, a brush pen. This is where our ABT Pro comes in. And we're gonna use that brush tip to our advantage. We're going to control it by how much pressure we apply, and we're gonna use it to make either dark, thick lines or much thinner ones as we write. We're gonna let the pen work its magic and give us this contrast 
that makes the brush script so beautiful. Let's get started tackling brush script. You're going to need a brush pen. You can use your ABT Pro, or since we're just practicing on paper right now, you can use a Tombow dual brush pen too, if you have that on hand. You're also going to need the handouts that you printed, and we're gonna start learning how to apply and release pressure as we write with our pen. Let's get started. As we get ready to start learning brush script, the first question that we have to ask ourselves is which lines are supposed to be thick and which lines in each letter are supposed to be thin? There is one quick and easy rule to remember when it comes to hand lettering, and that has to do with the type of strokes that we're creating. Anytime that your pen is moving across the paper to write, it's moving in one of three directions. Let's take, for example, the lowercase j. When we start that, our pen is moving up away from us on the paper. This type of movement is called an upstroke. In contrast, when we're coming down here for the sidebar of the J, our pen is moving down on the paper toward us from top to bottom. This, you've probably already guessed, is called a downstroke. Finally, sometimes our pen is moving across the paper for example, if we're crossing the letter T or we're doing a capital H, this is called a horizontal stroke. Now here's the rule that you want to keep in mind. When doing brush script, any time that you have a down stroke, any place that your pen was moving down toward you on the paper, that is going to be a thick line. The other types of strokes, upstrokes and horizontal strokes, are both going to be thin. So if we look at the words brush script, everywhere that you see a thick line, that's where my pen was moving down. When I went up again, it becomes thin. Down is thick, up is thin, and so on as we go through the rest of the letters in the words. So now that we know we need thick down strokes, we have to teach our pen how to get them to us. So here's what we're gonna do. Take your brush pen, remove the cap, and I want you to look for a moment at this tip that we have. It doesn't look like a regular marker tip. Instead, it almost resembles a paintbrush, and that's the point. It's designed to mimic the action of a paintbrush. So if you press this to your paper, what you'll notice is that that tip flexes and bends. Don't be afraid to do this. A lot of folks, when they first try a brush pen, are afraid that if they push and smush that it's gonna break the marker, but it won't, I promise. It's what this marker is made to do. What we're gonna do to make our thick down strokes is we're simply going to apply more pressure than we normally would when we write. So what I want you to do is take your pen Hold it at a normal 45 degree angle like you would anytime you're writing. And we're just gonna pull the pen down toward you on your scrap paper. So we're going from top to bottom, up to down. And as you do, you're applying pressure. Notice how thick and dark those strokes are. That's exactly what we want. If you're getting strokes that look like this, you're not pressing hard enough. Don't be afraid. I promise you're not going to hurt the pen. It's doing exactly what it was designed to do. So we're pressing. And what happens is that as we're holding our pen and pressing down, see how lots of the tip of the pen is making contact with the paper? That's exactly what we want because it's gonna give us those thick lines. So take a minute and practice some downstrokes. And you can see if you take a look at your first handout, brush pen drills, that's the first type of stroke that we want to practice. In contrast, when we want to make an upstroke, what we wanna do is not apply pressure. So this time, instead of going from down to up, or from up to down, we're gonna go from down to up, 
and we're not going to push. We're just going to let our pen gently touch the paper and it's going to give us a much thinner line. Notice the contrast between my thick line and my thin one. There's a big difference. I'm going to press for a downstroke and I'm going to release that pressure for an upstroke. So we go down and up and down and up. And you're just going to alternate these strokes on your scrap paper to teach your hand the difference between creating a downstroke and an upstroke. Today, as we learn how to control our brush pen, I'm going to be walking you through seven different shapes, which are all on that handout called brush pen drills. And these are the drills that every lettering artist learns to do when we first start out on our lettering journey. At first, it might not seem very exciting. You might be thinking, I signed up to learn writing, letters, not lines, but I promise you that once you master these brush pen drills, you're gonna be able to write any and every letter in the alphabet in brush script style. You see, these drill shapes are actually not just lines and shapes, but the building blocks of letters. And you're gonna see how we're able to combine them once we learn them and form all different kinds of letter shapes. So now we wanna have a page that's just filled with upstrokes and downstrokes, downstrokes and upstrokes, going from one to the other so that your hand learns sometimes I push and sometimes I release. Once we've done that, we want to move to the next shape that's on our page, and that's called an underturn. An underturn is no different really from what we were just doing, downstroke, upstroke, except for one little change, and that is that we're not going to pick up our pen. So we're gonna do a downstroke that goes right into an upstroke without lifting the pen from the paper. Here's how it works. We go down. As soon as we start to shift directions, we're gonna release pressure and we're gonna go back up. So we go down, over, and up. Down, over, and up down, over, and up. As you create your underturns, you might find that some of them look a little bit shaky. And if that's the case, I would suggest trying to make them a little bit smaller and trying to form them a little bit faster. When we write large, our hand has more time to do things we don't want it to do. The same thing is true when we write slowly. That gives our hand an opportunity to shake Whereas if we move quickly and purposefully, our hand has less opportunity to misbehave. Also, don't forget to give yourself some grace. You're learning a new skill today, which is brave and awesome. And remember, this, like anything else, is going to improve with practice. One of my favorite things to say, and I say this in all of my classes and all of my books, is that practice makes progress. None of us will ever reach perfection but we'll certainly improve and get better and better the more that we repeat our skills. So this is our underturn. We're moving from a downstroke to an upstroke, but without picking up our pen from the paper. The next shape that we're gonna be doing in our brush pen drills is the opposite, which is called an overturn. So rather than transitioning from a downstroke to an upstroke, we're gonna go the other way. We're gonna start with an upstroke and go into a downstroke. So up to down, up to down. And a lot of folks actually find this easier to do than the underturn because it's easier to start applying pressure than it is to stop. So you're going up and then down to the right and we're making these little mountain shapes. So if the underturn is a valley, the overturn is our mountain, we go from thin to thick, up to down, light pressure to more pressure. So once again, we wanna make sure that we're changing pressure as soon as our pen starts to change direction. So we're going up, and the second that we stop going over and start going down, that's where we press, right here at the top. So we have 
down strokes, up strokes, underturns, and overturns so far. The next of our brush drill shapes is something called a loop. And you'll notice here that this looks already like a letter. It looks like a lowercase l. To form this, we're doing the same idea as an overturn, going from an upstroke to a down, but this time, instead of going simply up and over, we're gonna go up and over to the left. So this one is left to right, this one is right to left, and we're gonna cross back over the upstroke that we already made. So on your scrap paper, we're gonna try some of these loops and we're gonna start by going up and then down to the left. Up, down, up, down. This one is a little bit trickier because we're going in a new direction, but it's that same basic idea of light pressure and then applying pressure as soon as our pen changes its direction. At any point, as I'm going through these drills, if those of you who are watching this on pre-recorded video would like to stop and do some more repetition, you can certainly do that. You can pause, repeat, rewind. <laughs> I don't know, do we say rewind anymore now that we don't have uh, cassette tapes and video cassettes? Um, or you can just pause, come back when you're ready to move on. Okay, so that is our loop. This is actually what we call an ascender loop. And I'll write that down for you in case you want to remember what this is called. Don't worry, there's not going to be a test, but just for your reference, an ascender is any part of a letter that goes up. So if we think of letters like our lowercase b or our lowercase d, we call this part the ascender. So this is an ascender loop. In the same way, any part of a letter that comes down, like in a J, a G, a Y, this is called a descender. And that means that sometimes we also have a descender loop. To form a descender loop, we're going to start with a downstroke and transition to an upstroke. So this is a little bit tricky because once again, like with the underturn, we're going from applying pressure to releasing it. But as you do it, just like with anything else, the more you repeat it, the more you teach your hand how to do it, the easier it'll become. So for this one, like the ascender loop, we're crossing back over a line we already made. We go down, then back up and to the right and cross that line. Down and up, down, and up, and this is gonna be really useful for our letters with descenders, like the J, the Y, and the G. So down and up, down and up, and that is our descender loop. We have one more shape to look at in our series of brush pen drills, and that is the oval. So to do the oval, we're going to do something that feels a lot like an underturn. We're going down to up, but instead of leaving it open, we're gonna close it. So we're gonna go down and up, and we're gonna come all the way back up and meet our original stroke. So as we practice that, we're going down to up, down to up. And once again, don't worry if they don't look perfect. None of them are gonna look perfect, mine don't. Each one is unique and different. We're just getting that idea of thick and thin, thick and thin. And just like anything else that we teach our bodies to do, hand lettering, brush script, will get into your muscle memory. If you think about how you drive a car, you ride a bike, or any of the other things, you swim, the things that you've taught your muscles how to do, Hand lettering is no different. We're teaching the muscles in our hand to work with our brain, and we're teaching them and training them to press when we make a downstroke and release when we make an upstroke. And the more that we go over and over these shapes, 
the more that it's going to solidify in our brain and in our muscle memory. And then what happens is eventually our muscle memory takes over and we don't even really consciously have to think about it anymore. Our minds and our brains just know what to do, which is a pretty cool thing. Believe it or not, after doing this for more than five years, I could just as easily write my grocery list this way and brush script as I could print it or write it in my regular script handwriting. So honestly, the more you do it, the easier it becomes. All right, so that is our oval. You'll notice that as we're practicing, I'm doing each shape a bunch of different times. I'm filling pages, and that's what you wanna do as you're practicing and learning how to do this. I filled sketchbooks with nothing but these shapes and letters because over time, like I said, your hand is gonna learn how to do that. It's gonna learn these skills, and you're not gonna to have to think so hard or work so hard to create these shapes. So now what we wanna do is we want to talk about how these shapes can come together. Remember I said that these drills are actually the building blocks of letters. So I took a few letters here, I just picked six, and I broke them down to show you how these building blocks work. We're gonna take things that you already know how to do and use them to form letters. So for example, if we take the oval that you just learned and we combine it with a downstroke, you get a lowercase a. You'll notice that at the end of my downstroke here, I did just the little beginnings of an underturn where I went down and just a little bit back up because remember, we're writing in script here, so ultimately all of our letters are gonna connect to each other. So I like to end each letter with a little upstroke so that, for example, if I were going to write the word an, I'm ready to connect it to my n. So we can put just that little tiny bit of an underturn on the end, and that's gonna help us to prepare to connect our letters later on. The next letter that I broke down is an n. It's just a downstroke combined with an overturn and that little underturn tail on the end. So just down, up and over. Down, overturn, down, overturn. As you practice these, you may find that it's easiest for you to break them down into shapes and lift your pen in between. So for example, for the N, you might wanna make your downstroke, pick up your pen, and then do your overturn. That is totally 100% fine. When we're learning cursive in school, we're often told never to pick up our pen in the middle of a letter or a word, but this is something different. This is not cursive. This is brush script hand lettering. So if it makes you feel better or if it's easier for you to pick up your pen in between strokes, by all means do it. If you find that you like just going straight from the downstroke into the overturn, or when you're writing your A, going right from the oval into the downstroke, go for it. So you can make your separate shapes, or you can keep your pen on the paper. Either way works. So that's our A and our N. Let's take a look at what happens if we add two underturns to a downstroke. All of a sudden, instead of an N, we get a lowercase m. So let's take a minute to practice that on your scratch paper. Once again, you can do your downstroke, overturn, overturn, and there's your M, or you can keep your pen on the paper the whole time. Either way, You've got your downstrokes in the right places, your thick and thin lines are where they're supposed to be. So both of those are effective, great ways to write your letter. One thing that I like to do when I write an M is I like to make the first overturn just a little bit taller. I find, if you think about letters, uh, words that have lots of letters with the overturns, like double N's, double M's, sometimes those words can be hard to read because it's just a whole bunch of bumps. And so to help with that and help with legibility, I like to make my first one a little bit taller. 
but that's totally a stylistic thing, so that's up to you how you wanna do that. But you can see that the M is just built, again, on those drill shapes of a downstroke and two overturns. Now let's take a look at a new letter, a D. This one's gonna go back to our oval, and now we're gonna try our hand at adding the loop to a letter. So this time, we're gonna do our oval and then a loop and that's gonna give us our lowercase d. And we can also do that without picking up our pen. So we're gonna take a minute and practice that on our scrap paper. Oval, loop, an oval, and a loop. And feel free to try it without picking up your pen. What I tend to do after I finish the oval, if I'm not gonna pick up my pen, is I go out to the right to start that loop. So I just go out and around like that. So oval, out to the right, and back down. And as always, feel free to pause and practice if you would like to do that on any particular letter. Now, to form a U, we're gonna make our underturn, and then we're gonna do our downstroke. So we've got underturn, downstroke, and we have our lowercase u. So this one should feel pretty good because it's basically just that underturn that we were practicing before. And if you do two of those in a row, you get a w. So you kind of get two for the price of one when you're practicing your underturns here. u or w. And remember, we're changing pressure at the exact point or just slightly before we start to move our pen in a different direction other than down. Then the last letter that I chose to break down for you is an H. And to make the H, you're gonna do a loop followed by an overturn. A loop and an overturn. Loop overturn. So when we practice that, you can split it into the two shapes or just go directly into it. So it's light pressure, then push, release, and push. Release, push, release, push. And that gives us our H. So I hope that gives you a quick overview of how we use these basic drill shapes that you're practicing to create the different letters of the alphabet. Most letters, if you break them down, are formed by some combination of the seven shapes that we've been practicing today. At the bottom of this handout, there's an example of the lowercase alphabet as well as the numbers zero through nine. And then the other handout that we have here has a sample alphabet that has capital and lowercase for every letter in the alphabet. So this is a reference that you can use to help you figure out where the downstrokes and upstrokes are for each and every letter. Now don't feel like you have to use this as an exact guide that every time that you write a letter, it needs to look just like mine. I recognize that some of my letters are formed differently than you might write yours, and that's okay. I know, for example, my S, I tend to do a lot like a print S, and part of that is because stylistically, aesthetically, I just like the way that looks. Part of it um, is because it's easier for me to read when I'm reading something, so I like the legibility of it, but it's totally fine if you write your S in one of these varieties. So you can do up, down, up, or up, down, loop, any of these are perfectly fine as an S. Same thing for the capital S. If you wanna form yours the way that you learned how to do it in elementary school, you can do it that way as well. This is just meant to be a guide for you to help you figure out where to press and where to release. If the line is thick, that means I applied pressure. If it's thin, that means I didn't and I used the light pressure on an up or a horizontal stroke. 
if you would like to trace these letters, and I also have a handout for you that is a tracing sheet, a practice page, you can certainly do that. You can form your letters just like I did, or you can put your own spin on it. Every lettering artist has their own style and their own way of writing each letter. And that's not only okay, that's what we want. My goal is that if you see my work on Pinterest or Instagram, you'll immediately recognize my style and say, hey, I bet Amy Latta wrote that. And the same thing is true for a lot of my other artist friends. I want to let you know about a free resource that I have as we're working through this practice. Um, if you go to my website, which is amylattacreations.com, across the top menu header, you will see free practice pages. And if you click on that, it will take you to more free practice pages than you could ever imagine. I even have practice pages that are for each and every individual letter of the alphabet. I went through and did a month long series one month where I took each day a new letter and I went over how I form it, where to push, where to release, and then there's practice pages that are nothing but that letter. So you can print out practice pages for each individual letter of the alphabet, as well as ones that have the entire alphabet. They all have places for you to trace and then places for you to do your own practice. Um, so that is a resource that you can grab if you want additional practice with what we're working on today. Now that we've learned the basics of controlling a brush pen to create brush script style writing, it's time to turn our attention to our project. We looked at a number of alphabet letters, but the most important ones to us right now are the ones that we're going to be using on our home decor sign. You can certainly use your alphabet guide to help you write any words or phrases that you like, but I chose to do This Is Us, and if you would like to make a sign like mine, what I've done is I've broken down into the letters that you need to learn in order to write this phrase. So specifically today, we're focusing on T, H, I, S, and U. Even though it's a little bit longer phrase, we only have five letters that we need to master. So let's start with the T. To make our T in brush script, all we're doing is making a downstroke into an underturn, and then you're gonna cross it. You can cross it totally straight if you like, or you can use a bit of a waving line to make it even more fun. So we're just doing a downstroke and crossing our T with a thin horizontal stroke. So as we go across, we're not gonna push. We want that to stay nice and thin. So a T is pretty simple. The H we just looked at when we were breaking down our shapes. So remember an H, is nothing more than a loop and an overturn. A loop and an overturn. So on this handout, you can trace mine and you can also practice your own. You can certainly practice more if you wanna do more repetitions of each letter on your scrap paper as well. I is another nice and simple letter because all it is is a downstroke into a little bit of an underturn with a dot on the top. So I is gonna be one of your favorites. Nice and simple, nothing to it. Then we talked briefly about the S, how I make mine more of a print style versus you can certainly do the cursive style. The cursive style we looked at just going up, then down and either looping around or if you're more comfortable going back out like that, that's fine. For me, I do more of the print, which is a little bit trickier because it has a lot of curves. I just push, release, push, release. Push, release, push, release. And finally, we have the U that we already mastered when we were doing our putting together our shapes drills. So we're doing our underturn, and that's all you have to master in order to do This Is Us, just these five basic letters. So we already did the H and the U, so we're just adding the T and the I, which are no more than downstrokes, and our S. I've done the phrase here, if you'd like to trace the whole thing and get a feel for how those letters connect. And you might find that you wanna do this a few times on scrap paper as well to practice what you're going to write. 
if you're choosing to write your last name or home or anything else that you want to do, um, I would just suggest practicing multiple times on a piece of paper before transferring it onto your wood. Now we also want to take a quick look at an embellishment, a little leafy vine that you can use. If you notice on the sample, I put almost like parentheses, one on either side of my phrase, this is us, just this simple vine that has leaves coming off of it. And remember, I mentioned in the beginning that you can leave it that simple farmhouse black and white, or you can color it in with green ABT Pro markers. Here's a sign that says welcome. So you could also do that, any word or phrase that you like. If you want to leave your sign without embellishments, that's totally fine, but I feel like they add a little something extra and it's a fun little thing to learn. So to do this, we're not going to use the brush tip of our pen. Instead, if you have the ABT Pro, we're gonna use the chisel tip end. And all we're gonna do is first, we're gonna draw a line that curves a little bit. Remember I said mine are kind of like parentheses. So they're just gonna curve a little and then we're gonna make a leaf shape on one end. Then you're gonna come down that line and you're just gonna draw a little short line with a leaf shape attached. And you're gonna continue doing that as you go down the line. And the leaf shape is really nothing but a teardrop that's a little bit pointy on the end. And as a matter of fact, if you prefer, you could make your leaves more rounded and they're still gonna look super cute. You can totally do something like that. It's just gonna look like a different plant. So this is an example to show you what they look like when they're finished. And again, yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine. You can do more leaves, fewer leaves, bigger leaves, smaller leaves. It's any way that you would like to do it because this is your project. And the idea is that it has a little bit of you infused in it. That's the best part of homemade hand uh, handmade home decor and gifts is that a little bit of the artist comes through in the project. The final handout that I've provided for you is the phrase, this is us, in case this is the one that you'd like to use. And it's sized in brush script to fit onto the sample sign that I'm using from my local Michaels. So if you have the same materials and are writing the same phrase, you're going to want to use this practice sheet to give you an opportunity to practice one more time before you go onto your sign and to try writing a little bit bigger than what we were doing on our regular practice sheets and drills. If you would like to use this as a pattern, what you can do is line it up on your sign, take a pencil, and trace over these lines with a little bit of pressure, and that will make slight indents in your wood, allowing you to see where the letters go. However, you certainly don't have to do that. You can simply trace over this with your brush pen to get a feel for how to do it, and then freehand it on the sign yourself. So now it's time to move on to our wooden sign. And our first step is going to be to pencil in the position of our words. At this point, we're not concerned about brush script. We're concerned about getting our lettering where we want it to go on the sign. A good rule of thumb when you're spacing something out is to always start in the center. So the first step is to find and lightly pencil mark the center of your sign. And then we need to figure out what is the center of our phrase. Here we have four letters plus a space gives us five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So for the center of what we're doing, we're going to count backwards. One, two, the space counts as three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five is this space. So in between the space after this and the eye of is, is going to be our center. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to lightly pencil in our is right here close to my center line. And then I'm gonna pencil in the S. And you can see that right now, I'm not doing any down strokes versus up strokes. I'm not thickening anything. All I'm doing is just writing in script the words, this is us. 
and that's to give me an idea of where these lines are going to go. So we don't need to worry about any artistic technique. We're just getting things where we want them. If you find that yours doesn't feel centered, if you feel like you have too much space on one side, this is the time to erase. A Tombow mono eraser is actually the best eraser that I could recommend. Uh, you can go back and erase anything that you don't like and re-pencil it so that you have everything in the right position. In addition to penciling in the position of our words, we also wanna make sure to position our embellishments. So remember, we want parentheses sort of shapes for our leafy vines. And then I'm just gonna lightly sketch a few leaves so that I know where they go. My leaves are alternating, starting with a higher leaf on the outside and then a leaf a little bit lower on the inside. But if you wanna put your leaves right next to each other, you can totally do that as well. Once everything is penciled in, and remember, you can always go back and erase and change up until you do anything with the ABT Pro marker, it's time for us to go over our pencil lines with our marker and make them permanent. So remember, our ABT Pro is alcohol-based, which means if you get it on your clothing, it's not coming out. So you wanna make sure to be careful while using this and keep it only on the wood. It has the chisel tip on the bottom, which is what we're gonna use for our leaves, and it has the brush tip on the top, which is going to do our lettering for us. I'm going to remove the cap, and then I'm gonna trace over the letters that I penciled in, making sure that all the downstrokes are areas where I press, and on upstrokes and horizontal strokes, I release the pressure, just like we practiced in our drills and on our practice pages. So I'm gonna press and release, press and release. And remember, these are those same strokes we learned, downstroke, underturn, and so on. And we're gonna do this to go across with our lettering. So I'm doing this is us. Now you'll notice that there may be spots where your marker cuts out a little bit, or particularly since this wood has some grain to it, there's some bumps, you might find that some of your lines get bumpier than you want them to be. But no worries, we're gonna fix that up in the next step. This step is just using our brush technique to get our words onto the wood using the Tombow ABT Pro brush pen. Now, once our words are written, we're gonna go back and we're actually gonna take the chisel tip end and clean everything up. So any place where you wanted your line to be a little bit straighter, if it got bumpy because of the texture of the wood, you can go back and fix it up using that chisel tip end. The downstrokes in particular might be areas where this happens because naturally as the brush hits those little bumps, it just has a bumpy journey on its way and we can smooth that out with a nice smooth line from the chisel tip. Also, if there are any areas where you wanted a little bit more contrast or a little bit wider line on your downstroke, you can do that now as well. If there are imperfections in your lettering, remember, give yourself grace. This is something you just learned today. No one expects perfection. Don't be afraid to work on your wood. These signs are not expensive at all. If you make one and you don't love it, it's easy and inexpensive enough to grab another one and try again. Remember, you can always try on other shapes and sizes of signs. So check out your Michaels wood section. You can get unfinished wood if you like and paint it a base coat, or you can get the already whitewashed ones. Those are my favorite for lettering because it was so nice, wasn't it? Just to be able to pick up this sign and letter on it without any prep work. No sanding, no painting, no whitewashing. It was already just ready for our lettering. Okay. Once you've done any little cleanup and fix up that you want, we're gonna move to our embellishments, still using our chisel tip. 
and we're gonna come over and do the one on the right first. So we're gonna make that curving parenthesis line and I like to put a little bit of a triangle shape at the bottom of my vine. You certainly don't have to, but that's something I like to do on mine. And then you are gonna put your leaf on the top and then I just went outside and on the inside and on the outside and on the inside and you can make your leaves any shape and size that you like you can make them larger as they come toward the bottom or you can make them a consistent size like mine that's the fun part about art is that every time you make something new you get to make those artistic choices and each time you can try something different then once your leaves and your vines are complete your final step here is going to be to go back and erase your pencil marks. As soon as your ink is dry, because it's alcohol-based and permanent, we can go back in with our Tombow Mono Eraser. This comes in a lot of different sizes, but it's a wonderful eraser that I love. And you can go back and you can erase any of those pencil lines that you can still see and you don't have to worry that your ABT Pro marker is going to smear. As soon as the ink is dry, it is good to go. And you can erase and just get rid of those lines that you don't want. And you're gonna do that on your entire sign, under your letters, under your vines and your leaves. And all that's left will be your lettering and your drawings. At this point, if you would like to call your sign finished and call it a day, you absolutely can. That's what I did with the sample that you saw when you signed up for this class. You'll notice that my embellishments are just simply black and white. That's typical farmhouse style. You can leave it at that and call this a finished project. Give yourself a pat on the back. If, however, you would like to add some color, you can feel free to do so using green ABT Pro markers, or really any color you like. If your home decor, like mine, is turquoise, you could do turquoise leaves, or you could do any color that matches what's in your home. I'm gonna be using the Tombow ABT Pro. I have here a 173 and a 245. Uh, there's also a nice darker green, a 249. All of these can be purchased individually at your local Michaels, so if you want specific colors, you can grab those. They also come in color palettes where you get um, different shades of the same color and they come in larger sets as well. So if you really love the ABT Pros and decide that you would like to invest in a set of those, um, you can get something like the Nature Palette, which has bunches of different ones that go together for nature type designs, um, 12 different marker colors. Uh, so there's lots of different ways to buy these individually or in the sets. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my lightest green, the P173, and I'm just going to color inside my leaves. Then what I'm going to do is use my little bit darker green to blend and create more of a dimensional effect. So what I'll do is take my darker shade of green, the P245, and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna go right around where the vein of that leaf is. And all that's gonna do is just make a spot on my leaf that's a little bit darker than the rest. And you can see that that gives a fun little two-tone effect. And you can do that. Um, all of the ABT Pro markers are blendable like this. So you can use different shades of purple or different shades of blue or any other color that you like, you can do the same effect on other projects when you're working on different embellishments and doodles. Uh, these markers are very easy to blend with and they create really gorgeous projects. So there's my light green and here comes my dark green. And again, remember this is handmade. It's not supposed to look like it came out of a factory or a machine. So it's okay if you see brush strokes, it's okay if things are slightly not exactly the same length. Uh, these aren't perfectly symmetrical, but that's part of the beauty of it. So here is my finished project. Well friends, that's our project. 
Does your workspace look anything like mine right now? I have so many pieces of scrap paper with lettering all over it. I have eraser dust and a million markers. And you know what? To me, that's the sign of a great day. So now that we have our finished project, it's ready to hang and display in your own home or to give as a gift. These are so nice to give for Christmas, for birthdays, graduation, uh, Father's Day is coming up. And it's wonderful because now that you know the basics of brush script, you can personalize them to say literally anything you want. I liked starting with This Is Us as a first project, but you can do anything going from here. Like I said, there's tons of practice projects and um, practice sheets that you can go over on my website at amylattacreations.com and you can find and go over how to do every single letter and how to write anything your heart desires. It's so easy to make wooden signs with the help of the Tombow ABT Pro because now we can finally write and brush script in a permanent way on all kinds of surfaces, not just wood, but also metal, plastic, glass, fabric, you name it, the ABT Pro can help you to letter on it and take your hand lettering off the page. Speaking of which, Hand Lettering Off the Page is the name of my most recent book. It came out last November and it has 25 projects that are similar to this one, where we're taking our hand lettering off of paper and putting it onto things that you can wear, decorate your home with, and give as gifts. I would love for you to check that out on Amazon, at Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, or anywhere else that books are sold. Thank you so much for joining in today's class. I hope that you learned um, a lot the basics of brush script, a simple embellishment, and how to create your own farmhouse style wooden sign. All of the supplies that you need for this project can be found at your local Michaels. So if you didn't have them with you today, you can grab those at any time and craft along with me, creating your own beautiful sign. Once your project is finished, I would love to see how it turns out. One of the unfortunate things about a recorded class versus a live one is that I can't see what you're doing and what you're creating. And that's actually my favorite part of what I do is seeing what others create with the instruction that I provide. So my begging thing that I would ask you to do right now is to take a picture of what you create from this class and either share it on social media and tag me at Amy Latta Creations or send me an email at amylattacreations at gmail.com and then I can see and share what you've created. Also, don't forget to tag Tombow USA and Michael Stores because all of us would love to see what you've done. This is just the beginning of your lettering journey and you can create so many wonderful projects with the Tombow ABT Pros, Tombow Dual Brush Pens, and other products. All of these can be found at your local Michaels and you can get creating. I would love for you to visit me at amylattacreations.com, check out my Lettering Academy, and don't forget to send me your photos and tag me so that I can see the beautiful things that you're making. Thank you so much for following along and happy creating.